Okay, so this is my entry for week nine for the video um, mon monologue. Um, just starting off with looking at the iterative report approach that I took towards this module challenge. Um, just on the top of the screen, you can see the one that Keelan has posed to us um, of what she thought would be your step by step. And then below, you can see the actual steps that I found that I followed. So as you can see, I was always kind of jumping back and forward. Going from need finding to initial ideas, then back to need finding, then going to analysis, back to need finding to clarify the problem, then going research, back to analysis, and then on to investigation, developed ideas. Then from developed ideas, I was always going back to my research before going on to my experimentation. And even in my experimentation, I was going back again to developed ideas before going on to the actual realization of the solution. And this is all just true feedback, um, feedback from Keelan, feedback from Connor, and moving on in my sketching and actual research of the research of my design to ensure that I was clarifying a problem and that I was solving the environmental and social aspect. So for this submission, I'm going to be looking at the developed ideas and experimentation and just the start of what I've done of the realization. So from the developed ideas, you can see that um, the development that I took from my initial idea of the unit towards the more developed idea on the right hand side. So following my analysis of the problem statement, investigation and research of my initial ideas, I have developed them. Mainly the dimensions of the project has adapted, has been changed to fit the requirements. So the 450 millimeters by 450 millimeters. Social and environmental aspect has stayed the same for the uh, well-being and health of students in inner city schools and then the actual reusing of uh, waste food for composting and fertilizer to go into the soils for the reproducing of the any flowers or vegetables that are being grown in these units and then on top of that for the environmental you have the actual upcycling of the materials um so this all came from my experience on school placement where the ty coordinator had students carrying out extremely small caring for an extremely small garden located in the school as exercise to encourage the students to work outside and get away from their screen, which is major these days in schools. And then the environmental issue is upcycling and composting and food waste. So this could, I just think this could be very practical in schools such as inner city schools, where students have very little actual area outside that they can go out, um, work with some clay, get their hands kind of dirty, be growing their own produce. They're not just stuck inside in the classroom looking at a screen the whole time. It's just a break from the, from the modern day classroom for students to get out, get a bit of fresh air, that they're not just, if they're not into sports, they can go out, they can work in the garden. And if they are, they, there's still that option there for them. Then uh, I've added a veneer design onto my project made from strips of dark wood. So the dark and the, the dark wood will contrast with the beach to make a, a nice aesthetics. Um, this is to add to the aesthetics of the project and then it's adhering to the module requirements. So secondly, I carried out the data rams. So looking at the innovation, usefulness, aesthetics, the uh, unobtrusiveness, the honesty, the ageless, uh, concern for environment, little design as possible, all these aspects around my design, just ensuring that I have looked at every aspect, um, every aspect possible when designing this, ensuring that I am actually solving the problem and I've done it to the best of my abilities. So next I have the experimentation of the project, so you can see in order to develop my ideas effectively in cooperation with the research I carried out, I experimented with design ideas through 3D drawings and SOLIDWORKS. The image on the left of the screen shows my initial ideas, so you can see that in the sketching and in the SOLIDWORKS actual drawing. Um, through research and experimentation, I noted that it does not cater for inclusivity or does it fit the regulations of the module. I found that the box kind of restricted the how close the students could actually get to the growing unit if if say if they are in a wheelchair or or some other kind of disability um if you look to the right you can see that the the new design is kind of sloped backwards so it's allowing a kind of an, a lap between the second tier and the top tier so the second tier is extruding out a bit further than the composting box and the top tier for students that might not be able to get up to the top level such as if you're in a wheelchair or if you, if some form of disability, um, they can work in the second tier. 
Um, experimented with different dimensions, designs, as seen in the drawing on the right. So you can see the sketch that I carried out. I feel that through experimentation I've solved, resolved any issues such as inclusivity, ergonomics of gardeners, uh, such as gardeners working down on the ground. They're not, these are what's known as raised beds, so they're not going to be in the, on their knees working where they can develop uh, sore knees, sore backs, um, um, other aspects like that. So they're kind of raised off the ground. This results in actual less compaction in the clay and just ease of use for the, for the user. I also experimented with using different types of recycle, different parts of the recycled desk. I tried using different parts for the legs of the projects, and this part actually worked in my favor as I found that it will, as the sloping backwards will allow more natural light to hit the second tier. Then I just looked at the giant that giant type that I had chosen. So, it is there is already existing dovetail giants on the project, and this does then add to the aesthetics as I'm keeping the same type of giant. But in the above graph, you can see the direction of the action forces. So when full of soil, there will be a vast amount of pressure acting on each side. And it is clear that the dovetail is the optimal joint. As visible in the graphic the right, on the right, the sloped edge of the dovetail acts as a locking mechanism when pressure is applied and holding that piece uh, in place securely. So then I just have started into the realization of the, of the realization of the actual growing unit, just what I had gotten done in college. So I'd only started on to, I'd sourced my material, I had disassembled it fully and ran it through the drum sander, just kind of going through in some problems that I encountered, such as warping in the, in the, warping in the timber when using the drum sander. You see this on the bottom right hand image, I'd use the heat gun and the scraper to remove the last bit of varnish where the piece was just warped and if I had stayed going on the belt sander, or on the drum sander, the thickness would have been different um, than the rest of the materials because I would have had to run through more times. Other than that, it was other just kind of in the disassembly, one of the problems was taking out the screws. A lot of them were old and seized in place and they either snapped in the middle or they didn't come out at all and they ended up having to chisel around them causing damage to the timber. But that's kind of all I've done, all I have done so far. So just to develop ideas and the experimentation. Uh, thank you.